Welcome so much from the Center of Excellence from to Health at the Department of uh, New Brunswick of Education. Really excited to have everybody here. Um, my name is Deneen Diamond and I'm the lead for the Center of Excellence and I am extremely excited to present to you our special guest today, Sophia Kirstead Abbas, and I'm going to do a quick introduction and then I'm going to hand it right over to Sophia. So Sophia Kirstead Abbas is a bilingual high school student, a singer, songwriter, writer, intensely trained dancer, actress, mental health advocate, and public speaker on trauma and teens, having presented in schools and conferences throughout Canada. She's danced on national television platforms, performed in her mom's TED's talks with her sister Bella, and achieved the top 100 in the CBC Searchlight competition. Her latest endeavor as co-host and producer of a new podcast, Spark, A Mother-Daughter Journey, has recently hit top 15% for the new podcast in Canada. And I'm very proud to say that we are showcasing the podcast on the Center of Excellence website, and I'll be posting um, the website information uh, in the chat as well. So without further ado, please welcome Sophia. Hi, everybody. Okay, I'm just gonna present my slides here for you guys. And do pipe in and tell me if ever I start to lag a little bit. I am using school Wi-Fi, so just let me know, and we'll get that sorted. All right, so let me just start sharing. Okay, hopefully everyone can see this well. So hi everyone, I'm presenting on mindfulness and trauma in teens today. So my name is Sophia Ray, and as Anine just said, I am a singer, songwriter, dancer, activist, public speaker, and producer slash co-host of Spark, A Mother Daughter Journey, which is a podcast I do alongside my incredible mom, Jenny Kirstead. So my parents are Jenny Kirstead and Blair Abbas, who are both educators in mindfulness and yoga. And they've always told my sister and I that mindfulness practices, they're like money in the bank, because you're never quite sure when you're going to need to draw on them, but they're there if you need them. And I would say that 2020 and even 2021 were two years that I really put these practices to the test. I would say that over the past two slash three years, um, life has given me the unfortunate opportunity to speak on a very personal level about trauma in teens. But not only that, it has also opened my eyes to the very real struggles of every teen around me. So. Before we begin, I want to clarify one thing. I believe that most of us right now would be able to describe the way trauma feels, but many people don't actually know what it is. So what is trauma? And just before we begin, the term trauma is most simply defined as an injury to a person's physical or emotional well-being. It is also described as a shock, which can shatter the nervous system, leaving the person emotionally wounded and confused and unable to carry out normal life tasks. So there are three different types of trauma. Firstly, we have acute trauma, which essentially means a one-time traumatic experience like a car accident or a sporting injury. Then there is chronic exposure to traumatic situations such as abuse. And finally, there is complex trauma, which is the exposure to varied and multiple traumatic events, or often on an interpersonal or a social nature. So what are the feelings that are associated with trauma? Well, firstly, we have intense fear. Secondly, we have hopelessness. Three, loss of control. And four, the threat of danger. And before I go any further, I want to make sure that we all know how to take care of ourselves if we feel triggered by anything I share today and that we give ourselves permission to do so. So here are three things that we can do if we start to feel overwhelmed, because I know that I definitely get like that sometimes. So firstly, we have ground yourself by feeling your feet in contact with the floor. Secondly, there is take a couple deep belly breaths. And third, we have doodle or draw as a way of calming your nervous system. So now that we've established that, I'm gonna share with you my story. So on the morning of April 19th, 2020, I woke up to a seemingly normal day, okay? This was as normal as it could be during a global pandemic, of course, because the global pandemic had just started. And obviously this was a reality that felt already impossible to maneuver. 
And so my mom calls me over on this morning and she says to me, Sophia, there is a warning of an active shooter in Puerto Peak. And I remember with the haze of sleep still lingering, I'm attempting to process what she just told me. And she continues saying, I just texted Lisa, my aunt. She said, I haven't heard back yet, but let's not worry though. It's all gonna be okay. And in that moment, I had that sinking feeling in my gut. I'm sure you guys all know this feeling, the feeling where you can tell something isn't right. And I remember thinking to myself that that in itself, it just, it felt like an empty promise. Something wasn't right. So we got a call from Catherine, my godmother, and confusion starts to rise. And there's different information spiraling. And I heard someone tell to me that they were just rumors. But I honestly couldn't shake the feeling of unease. And a couple of minutes later, my dad gets a call and he relays the news that Lisa McCauley, my aunt, has been murdered. Now, when someone tells you something of such impact, well, you would assume they'd feel the world crashing down on them, but I didn't. And in fact, to be completely honest with you, I, I don't really even remember feeling a thing. I actually remember monitoring my reaction, almost searching for the pain, confused why it wasn't there. And I was looking around at my family members. We all kind of just looked at each other for a moment, like, wow. And in that moment, I could tell my life was never going to be the same again. My mom couldn't process it. She had just lost her brother two years ago. And in that moment, she became an only child at the mere age of 47. So the rest of this day was spent in complete shock as we attempted to process this new reality we now had to call ours while receiving updates on the number of deaths throughout the day. I remember we turned on the television and it was five and then it was 10 and then 15 and finally 22. And for those of you who don't know the full scope of this story, on the night of April 18th and the morning of April 19th, the unthinkable became a reality here in Nova Scotia. So later we would learn about a man disguised as a Mountie who wreaked havoc, killing 22 innocent lives. Now this mass shooting in Nova Scotia left the province in complete shock and immense grief, and the repercussions of this violent act still continue to haunt Nova Scotia to this day. Now, people react to traumatic events in vastly different ways. And I really do believe that some might not even realize they are ex experiencing trauma until sometime afterward. And in my opinion, I really don't believe there is one set trajectory as everyone deals with trauma in different ways, some obviously less skillful than others. But I'm discovering that after experiencing a traumatic event, there really is no one size fits all. So for example, my trauma has manifested in a hyper awareness of COVID. The gunman was gone, but I transferred my fear. And last year, I actually rarely went to school because I was so terrified of COVID. I didn't want to lose another family member. I completely isolated myself from the outside world. I didn't hang out with any of my friends, nor did I engage in any extracurricular activities that didn't require people to be masked. I actually presented behaviors that resemble OCD or obsessive compulsive disorder. And honestly, when I look back on that time, I really don't recognize the person I became. I actually lost touch with some of my closest friends, which are friendships that I've now rekindled, but it was a very scary and lonely time. So in my opinion, trauma needs to be something that is readily talked about since we all experience difficult, painful things that shock our system. And despite the awareness we have today, there is still a stigma around acknowledging hard times. But I always say this, if we don't acknowledge them, then how are we going to move forward? Now, a couple of weeks ago, on the second year anniversary of the mass shooting, I went to school as we had just returned from a trip to California to kind of get away from the inquiry, which if you guys don't know what that is, it's something that's going on right now on a legal level to do a more in-depth look at what happened on April 18th and 19th. And it can be a lot. Um, they're digging up evidence and new information, and it's kind of like we're reliving the whole situation over again. So we went on a little trip to get to get away from it all. And when I got back from school, I was really behind on my schoolwork. It was about a two week trip. And I found myself in math on the day of the second anniversary doing work. And I became very overwhelmed by the gravity of the situation and everything that my family was facing on this day. And I actually started to cry. Now. It was a fellow student in that room that actually noticed 
what I was going through and came over to support me through. And this is absolutely incredible. So she knelt down eye to eye with me and she said, Sophia, you are so freaking strong. She said, I'm so proud of you for facing this difficult moment. She said, what you're feeling right now, it's okay. And then she said, can I give you a hug? So let's unpack this brief interaction for a moment. This peer who I honestly really wasn't close with made eye contact with me, fostering connection and trust. She then acknowledged my inner resources of strength and bravery for being present to my pain. And then she used co-regulation to help ground me by affirming that my feelings were seen and completely valid. Finally, she asked permission and then she comforted me with a physical and reassuring embrace. I wanna break this down even further. Firstly, we have eye contact. Secondly, we have acknowledgement. Thirdly, we have co-regulation. And then fourth, we have comfort. And this is something that you guys can use as well if you wanna support someone through a crisis, because I know that it can be scary. There's a lot of really big feelings. So trauma greatly impacts our mental health, which is obvious given what I've just shared with you display of how it's affected my mental health. And I think we all need to give ourselves permission to reach out for help if we need it, which can look like having an open, open, honest conversation with your parents or even contacting your guidance counselor, maybe even asking for a professional therapist. I think we all need to understand that it's not a sign of weakness to ask for help, but it's actually a sign of strength. And with the support of others, there is an opportunity for something I like to call post-traumatic growth which is the very best case scenario for anyone dealing and healing from a traumatic event. Now, in addition to outside help, it is also very effective to have tools that you yourself can draw on. So I'd like to offer some exercises that you can apply in your life when times get tough. So the first one is creative expression. Now, sometimes I've noticed that the pain becomes so overwhelming that I need a way to distract and release it. And it is at this point that I draw on my tool of self-expression. For me, this could be writing poems or even music. I'm also a dancer, so that's definitely another outlet that I use to express myself. For my mom, she's actually started a memoir as not only a way to tell people her story, but to help others in similar situations. My sister Bella has become an incredible chef. She's like a master chef now. And she's actually starting up a small business. So these are all examples of self-expression. And I invite you to take some time and figure out what types of self-expression work for you. This could be physical activity or art, anything that allows you to take a moment to breathe and center yourself. Okay, so the next one is having a mantra. So the past couple of months, I've actually not only struggled with my mental health, but also acne and eye problems. And my mind is very it's very susceptible to something I call micro-focusing, meaning sometimes the only thing I can think about is a certain problem I may have in the moment. And when I get like this, it's very difficult for me to bring myself out of the spiral. So I've actually chosen the mantra, this too shall pass. And in stating that mantra, I bring myself back from the spiral before I get too deep and I can't do anything about it anymore. And I've actually ordered temporary tattoos that say this too shall pass on them. And I'm probably gonna place like, you know, my finger or on my arm in a very visible spot. And in saying that, I'm able to remind myself that my problems, they're temporary, just like the tattoo. Now it will only last a couple of months, but that for me is like a constant reminder that, you know, I can get through and I'm on the right track. Okay, the next one is gratitude. Now, when I find myself spiraling out of control, it's very helpful for me to change my awareness from the problems at hand to everything that I'm grateful for. And honestly, this can be a very difficult practice, especially when you're in the depths of a problem. So I like to have a gratitude journal, which throughout my days, I'll actually take little notes of things I'm grateful for. And so then that way, when I start to become micro-focused on a problem, I'm able to pick up that journal and look at the things that I'm grateful for. And it just gives me a better perspective. And it really helps me understand that, you know, life is going to be OK and I'm fortunate to even be here today. OK, this next one is actually my favorite and it's name it to tame it. 
So this is the practice of identifying what you're feeling or thinking so you can help yourself to feel better. My mom always uses this analogy. If a car breaks down, what's the very first thing you would do? You bring it to a mechanic and they'd figure out what's going on. You can't fix or heal anything until you know what the root of the issue is. So this helps us do exactly that. You know, I believe we're all a little bit disconnected from our bodies and sometimes we really have no idea what's going on and what we actually need. And this ties into a term called introception, which refers to the inward perception or our ability to perceive what our mind and body need. Now, by doing this exercise in times of trouble, you're able to identify the root of the issue. And then once you identify the root of the issue, you're able to give it voice. And for me, naming it has been a very freeing practice. So I, I invite you guys, let's just take a moment right now to be present to our bodies. Without the need to fix or change anything, I just want us to observe how you're sitting. Let's take a couple deep breaths here. How are you breathing in this moment? Can you identify what you're feeling? Be happy. Maybe a little tired. One more breath here. All right, the next one is self-care. So it's so important that we take care of ourselves. It really is. And today it's very easy to slide out of balance. So we need to carve out time in our schedule every day to do something that restores us. Now for me, I'm a really big fan of the Calm app, which actually provides you with short meditations that you can do at any point in time during your day to help center your mind. Now I take the time to do this at night as part of my routine. And I really incorporate it into my routine so that I have that to fall back on if I need it. Actually, last night I was having trouble sleeping. I have tests and whatnot today in this presentation. And obviously I'm a little bit nervous and I use the call map to help calm, calm my brain just so that, you know, I can give you guys the very best today. Perhaps take a minute to think about what you yourself can do with self-care every day to help center your mind and body. Oh, I think someone's unmuted. Lastly, we have talking to professional. Now, sometimes. Oh, what's going on? Can I just mm -hmm. ask everybody to mute themselves, please? Thank you. Sorry, Sophia. No problem at all. I know this Zoom and technology can be a little, it can be stressful and confusing. So the next thing we have is talking to a professional. And sometimes the very best thing to do is to seek professional help. And I know it can be scary to reach out, but they really have the tools necessary to help you through trying times. And sometimes relying on friends or family members can just be too much for them or beyond their scope of ability. So in closing, I just want you all to know that if you're struggling right now, you're not alone because it's a universal experience. And I want you to remember that there is always a healthy solution as a way to ease the pain. Perhaps think of a way that you can support one another, knowing that everyone is fighting their own battles. Thank you guys so much. This has been wonderful. I'm going to open the floor to some questions or comments, and I'm also going to place my Instagram and my Snap if anyone wants to send me a personalized message. You can talk to me about what's going on. I'm here. I'd love to hear it. So. Yeah, those are my socials. I can also put them in the chat as well if anyone wants them. All right. Let me just stop sharing now. And if anyone has any questions at all, I love answering questions, so just, yeah, put them in the chat. And there's no wrong questions either. Thank you so much, Sophia. I just put a little message in the chat as well for uh, teachers. Uh, we're asking that you put in your information regarding where you teach. And I know that um, I've heard Sophia speak for a couple of years now, and you wouldn't think that because she's so young, but I think the first time I heard her speak was maybe last summer. And um, her story and the way she articulates her story and her truths are just 
absolutely amazing. And this young woman is so happy to share her story. And I get emotional every time I hear her speak. So I truly want to say thank you um, from the Center of Excellence and from the department. But I do see that there's some questions. So I'm just going to hand that over to Stacy. Great. Um, thanks so much, uh, Sophia, for sharing. Um, it kind of relates to me. I lived in Nova Scotia during the uh, the mass shooting, and it was a really tough time. So I can't even imagine what you went through losing someone that close. So um, kudos for you for sharing. Um, and I guess wondering how you're doing now, where this um, uh, mass the inquiry is going on. You know, is it kind of um, bringing up those same feelings? Are you able to use these um, tools to your advantage during this tough time? Because obviously, all of this stuff is being brought back to the surface again. I definitely have had to draw on them again. I think it's not really affected me, but it's affected my mom. And I think that's another type of trauma that I didn't really touch on, but it's re-traumatization by like seeing someone else go through it. And that's what I have really had to deal with is the fact that my mom is really hurting through all of this. And, you know, I have to be present to that but I also have to take time for myself to fall back on those tools. Just, you know, using that call map, um, taking some time for self-care as well. I have done yoga as well. My mom's a yoga teacher, so, you know, I've used that. And with that, I'm able to kind of shut off the outside world and it allows me to really kind of focus on what I need and make sure that I don't, re-traumatize myself again. You guys are a little glitchy, by the way, a little bit delayed. So sorry if I am as well. Oh, that was great. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Teachers, if you have any questions from your students, if you'd like to write them in the chat, I know Sophia would love to uh, answer those questions. And while people maybe are writing, um, Sophia, can you speak to, um, I guess, the support systems that you have in your home are so powerful, and you spoke about your friends. Um, is there anything that the school system could do better to help support students that are struggling on, like, um, on a student level? Like, uh, I really am uh, interested in what the students have to say about how schools can support their students, because I know teachers and administrators and guidance counselors go above and beyond, but sometimes it's nice to hear from the students. Yeah, I definitely think that school has been um, a great place to support. Teachers are, I just, I love you all so much. You really helped me get through this with, you know, the be the in the best possibility, in the best case scenario, I want to say, um, I've really had a lot of post-traumatic growth and that's thanks to you guys. I think that really just opening up the floor and asking someone, I say this all the time, but just at, giving them the opportunity to come to you if you need to and letting them know that you're there. They may not want to talk about it. That's okay. I'm very open about this. Doesn't mean that everybody who's gone through a traumatic event is. I know people that you know, they don't even really want to acknowledge it. And that's okay, too. So I think just opening up the floor, letting them know that you're there. Guidance counselors, you're doing an incredible job. And I know there's so many students that need help right now, especially during this time. There's a lot going on. We're living through a global pandemic. There's a war going on. Like, it's just crazy. So I really want to thank you all. I think that we're doing the best we can right now with the tools that we have. Thank you. I'm just looking at the chat and you're having um, great messages there. You are strong and great inspiration and helpful things for others. Um, thank you. And we'll definitely be rewatching with my other classes. Thank you guys. I see some other people typing. Um, I always have lots of questions to ask, but uh, <laughs> Certainly, uh, again, I, I want to say thank you and we are recording the session so you can um, go to the website, but I do want to put another plug in there for uh, the podcast. Um, Sophia and Jenny on the podcast are, I, the word that I use is delicious because they are so um, 
healing and beautiful. And I actually listen to the podcast when I'm walking in the morning and I know your dad Blair does his walking. So it kind of brings me into the family in a kind of different kind of way. But um, certainly if if the students out there want a little bit more information or, or want to hear Sophia's voice again, I know sometimes even voices can be very calming. So Sophia and Jenny and Blair all have very calming voices. So if you want to hear them, um, maybe in kind of a live sense, the podcast is wonderful. You get to know them and their personalities, which are quirky and fun. Um, and um, they have a lot to offer. So please, if you have any questions or you want to um, get more information regarding uh, Sophia and her story, you can reach out to me or you can reach out to her directly. Um, and we would love to facilitate maybe future presentations or Sophia connecting um, with students or for whole schools and that type of thing because I know she's this is um, I think it's part of her dharma and um, her purpose and I, I I feel that from the bottom of my heart so thank you so much Sophia I will uh, see you this afternoon but I am going to stop the recording and um, certainly reach out to Sophia uh, personally if you have a, a question or a concern or you just want to share something and uh, obviously, um, if we ever heard anything that we needed to bring forward to an adult or a professional, we certainly would do that. So thank you so much, Sophia. I'm going to hand it over to you for the last word. All right. I'm actually going to put my socials in the chat because I know that sometimes I go through the slides really fast. So I'm just going to text that right now. And yeah, feel free to contact me. So my Instagram is Sophia Ray underscore official. Hopefully I wrote that right. And then snap is Sophia Ray 82. Yeah, perfect. Just in case anyone wants to, to chat. Awesome. awesome. Well, thank you. And I know that you have to go back to school. So we appreciate you taking time on your busy schedule. Please say thank you to your teachers um, and your family for just lending um, you to us for this morning for a half hour and this afternoon. So thank you so much. Signing off from the Center of Excellence for Health. We really appreciate it. Thank you, everyone. All right. Bye-bye.